If you're looking for a gorgeous and unusual hanging succulent, look no further. Cotyledon pendens is one stunning plant with amazing flowers. It's a succulent plant native to South Africa where it grows hanging off cliff faces. This is why it's commonly referred to as cliff cotyledon. It is quite rare in its native habitat and only grows on cliff around the Mbashi River. Pendens is a trailing plant and can spread to about 60 cm or 24 inches. If the growing conditions are good, it can get bigger than this. Height-wise, they can grow to about 10 cm or 4 inches, though the leaves will eventually pull the branch down as they grow bigger and heavier. New branches will form along the existing branches, creating thick growth. The leaves are small and only a couple of centimeters or about one inch. They are quite plump with a bit of a pointy tip. They are covered in a thick layer of farina. This white waxy substance acts like a sunscreen for succulents. The color is light green with reddish margins, though it can change depending on the growing conditions and seasons. During the growing season, pendants is mostly green-grey with only a slight hint of the margins, though some plants lose them altogether. But once it gets cooler or the plant is stressed, the margin colours intensify and the farina thickens, making pendants whiter. Cotyledon pendants will grow best in a sunny spot outdoors. It tolerates dappled light and shade outdoors, however, it may lose all margin color and look a bit leggy. Growing in it too much shade may result in a fungal disease as they are most likely to attack in shade where it's usually a bit more humid. Pendants can survive being indoors if the spot is sunny and bright. It will not be very compact and may not flower at all though. If you want the pretty colors and flowers, it is best to grow this plant outdoors. This succulent can be grown in pots as well as frost-free gardens. Tall pots, hanging baskets or window ledge pots will showcase this succulent best. A big pot or yearly repotting will result in longer branches and more flowers. Pendants does tolerate being root bound but may not grow very well once the roots are restricted. If you only get light frosts and no snow during winter, you can grow this succulent in the garden. They will look fantastic in rockeries or grown along the edges where they can hang over. To help plants establish and grow better, mix any type of potting mix in with the garden soil. The roots tend to be quite thin and can find it difficult to break through hard garden soil. By cultivating and mixing in a bit of potting mix, you'll add nutrients and improve the soil structure. If you choose to grow pendants in the ground, it's best to go for slopes or spots where water will drain away freely after rain. The absolute best potting medium for the succulent is a succulent potting mix when grown in pots. In the garden, you can get away with planting straight in the dirt, but it is advised to work a bit of potting mix through for better growth. From personal experience, cotyledon pendants may not be too happy about overwatering. However, if it's grown in a bright sunny position, the potting mix is well draining and the pot has a hole, it should tolerate rain and humidity. I've grown hundreds of these plants in my nursery and they are raised outdoors and live there all year round. Our climate is mostly on the dry side though and we get a lot of sunny days, so if your climate is naturally quite wet, it may be a good idea to grow pendants under cover. Also, if you're worried, bring it under cover during prolonged rain, just in case. When the weather is dry or if you grow this plant under cover permanently, water once the potting mix has dried up completely from previous watering. In summer, this could mean watering a few times per week and almost not at all during the cold months. Pendants is drought tolerant and will live for months without any water. But in my opinion, it should not be left too dry for too long as it may start losing leaves. Temperature-wise, it will tolerate heat well over 40 degrees Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit, though it should be moved out of the sun once it gets this hot. If exposed to direct sun during extreme heat waves, the leaves can suffer sunburn and the plant could die, especially when planted in dark colored pots. It said pendants is not very frost hardy. It can get frostburns and even die when temperatures drop below minus 1 degrees Celsius. 
frostcloth can be used to protect your succulents from the occasional frost, but if your climate gets snow, I'd advise to bring this plant indoors for the duration. Pendants is best propagated from cuttings, but it may be possible to also propagate leaf and seed. Personally, I think seed propagation is not worth it as it can take too long and it can be hard to find a reliable seed seller. Leaf propagation is very tricky and likely to result in failure most of the time. Plants in the cotyledon genus are generally very difficult to grow from leaves. I'm not going to say it's impossible though, but I wouldn't recommend it as it's probably going to be just a waste of time and effort. It's much better to focus on growing a decent sized mother plant from which you can take lots of cuttings. Small and big branches can be taken off. I even separate the longer ones into two to three smaller bits. Cuttings should be left to dry for about 24 hours before planting. This will give the wound a chance to heal and prevent harmful organisms from getting in. Once the wound is dry, they can then be planted into pots filled with succulent potting mix and transplanted into the garden or a bigger pot once enough roots develop. First roots should start growing in 2 to 4 weeks and the plant will be ready for transplanting in approximately 2 to 3 months. To get a fuller pot faster, you can plant multiple cuttings in one pot. The best time to propagate is spring and early summer, though do be careful to protect your cuttings from strong summer sun. If your winters are mild, very early autumn is also good, but do be aware that cotyledon rarely roots through winter. Personally, I do all cotyledon propagation through spring, so the plants are established for winter. Cotyledon pendants is not bothered by pests all that much, especially if you have tastier succulents around. Aphids can be a problem sometimes, especially during spring when new leaves emerge rapidly, but touch wood, I don't see them very often. I've not yet seen mealybugs attack either, but it's always good to stay vigilant with this pest as they can wreak havoc on your succulents. Root mealybugs, however, are pretty common and difficult to detect as they hide on the roots. They particularly like root-bound plants, so do check on those roots every year or so if you're not reporting regularly. And bigger pests such as snails, slugs, caterpillars and grasshoppers can attack too. They are usually responsible for bigger damage and can take multiple leaves off in one sitting. Pendant's flower is pretty spectacular, especially when there's a few of them at the same time. Flowers grow at the end of each stalk and are pendulous. They're orange-red, bell-shaped with spread out petals that curl back at the ends. Here in Australia, pendants flowers at the end of spring and through early summer, but this can be different in other parts of the world. All cotyledon are said to be toxic to humans and other animals. Exercise caution if you have small children, plant curious pets or livestock. And that is that for today. I hope this video was useful and if you'd like to add anything or ask a question you can do so in the comments below. To learn more about succulents hit the subscribe button or go to succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you so very much for watching.